Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I am at the beautiful Wayfarer eventing for some exciting training. I'm sure many of you know that it is only three weeks until I go to the Voltaire Design Babington Grassroots Championships. Little bit stressful but I thought I'd take you guys along with me to show you what I'm doing these final few weeks to prep for the big day. having a little wonder around this lovely cross-country course. Luckily, I shouldn't have any jumps in water at Badminton because this is a little bit daunting, I won't lie. So today I'm going to be having a lesson with Olympic rider and Canadian rider, Mike Winter. He is full of knowledge about cross country. So he's gonna be giving me some top tips of how to ride at that big course in three weeks time. Not gonna lie, I'm looking at a few of these fences and they are looking quite enormous. So I'm quite glad that I've come for a cross country lesson today. The lead up to this day has involved an awful lot of work. Jam's been doing lots of galloping work. I've been trying to gallop her about every five days. We've also been out eventing. And of course there's been lots of training, which you guys have seen. Today, I've teamed up with my amazing sponsor, Voltaire Designs, who are also sponsoring the entire event. And we're hoping that Mike is just gonna build my confidence even more. Obviously, my events have been going quite well, touch wood, up until this point, but I just wanted a cross-country lesson to absolutely nail and kind of fine-tune things a little bit. I want to work on jumping things on an angle, jumping some skinnier things. It's not about height today so much as sort of technique and working over the more technical things that I'll see at badminton that don't really appear in the kind of 90s and 100s that I've done so far. It is obviously a championship event, which means it's a lot more technical. So fingers crossed, Mike's gonna help me along with that, but I'm gonna go and meet him now and then we'll hop on jam and get going. I'm currently just studying jammy up to go out on the cross country last thing we want <laughs> this close to the big day is to have a slip and knock all of our confidence so i thought i'll be organized pop some studs in just to avoid that i think you're a bit excited though bam bam aren't you uh, that's a So I actually work very closely with my farrier. I've got an absolutely incredible farrier and Jam is going to be shod tonight and those will be her dancing shoes. So we timed it so that we had about three weeks, well, bang on three weeks before because we didn't want to put brand new shoes on her, but also obviously didn't want the shoes running really late and wearing down and the stud holes getting worn. So hopefully three weeks is gonna be the perfect amount of time and they'll be winning shoes. Hey, Jamie. All right, madam, should we get you tacked up? Girl. Oh. So, as I mentioned, and as you guys probably already know, I am very luckily sponsored by the amazing Voltaire Designs. So I'll be riding in this gorgeous Essentials monoflap saddle today. I've had jam in this for just over a year now and I absolutely love it. It's just so comfortable to ride in. It's nice and forward cut. It's a great eventing saddle. It's great to go cross country. Keeps my leg super secure. And the most important thing is that Jam absolutely loves it. It fits her perfectly. And she's just been going so much better since I changed her over to Voltaire Design. So I'm very, very grateful to be sponsored by them and ride in these beautiful saddles. Hopefully, it's gonna keep us nice and secure going around Badminton Bam Zam. Is the stud girth, so you've just seen me studying up. Jam is a particularly snappy horse with her front leg. She's very careful in front, which is obviously great for me, but it does then pose the risk of them studding their belly when they go like that. So 
Voltaire designs do these lovely stud girths. You can see it covers where their feet may potentially go just to give them a little bit of, well, a lot of protection. It's really interesting when you look at them, you can see the scuff marks on them, where obviously if you didn't have this piece of kit on, they would have hit their belly. Jam, you need some boots. Oh, this trip in the book, that one, Jammy. There's a good girl. I'm a bit nervous. I haven't actually had a cross country lesson on Jam ever. Have I? I've never had a cross country lesson on her. Really? No. I had one on Dora, that was my last cross country lesson. I jumped about 50 centimetres. Right, safety gear for me. Oh, I have to do a little cheeky, cheeky mic change, guys. Behind the scenes, it's show business. All right, I'll leave that little dangler there for a second. Da -da -da. My gorgeous point two air jacket, and obviously champion hat and body protector keep me safe and sound. Oh, I can see Mike coming. I'm scared. I wonder if I should clip you, my friend. Do you want to go there? Looks a nice, nice little spot for you. What do you reckon, Nick? Do. One two, one two. Oh, I need riding boots on. Now this is the money shot. <laughs> me putting my hairnet on. Righty ho! Hydration is key. Thank you! Thank you. Ooh. Right, find Mikey. I don't know if we're allowed to call him Mikey. Might not be his favourite nickname. Jam! <laughs> I've done it. Right, to the cross country course. Um, but yeah, no, full Connie. She, we got her from Ireland as a three year old um, and then had a fall from her and she kind of came into work as like a six year old. We sort of did her some favours because she was very, very weak. Um, so she started eventing 2020 and we qualified for badminton last year to go at 90. Yeah. Um, and she's currently done 200s and gone double clear at them. Um, right. Yeah, so that's kind of... So your aim for badminton grassroots this year? Yes, yeah, so literally in three weeks. In three we're weeks. Going. And are you yeah. eventing between now and then? She's got one more event at Ascot, which oh, right. I think, yeah, I mean, that's I'm kind Sunday, of... Sunday, isn't it? Yeah, I'm there yeah. as well, yeah. Um, yeah, so ground dependent. I yeah. think, and so, you know, depending on how today goes, it's like it's, it's nerve wracking to know what to do with her, like how close to event her or, or not. But I think yeah. the plan is to go. Well, my horse that's entered at badminton, I'm on the wait list, but um, that's running at Burnham Market in the four short Friday, Saturday, and that will be his last run there. And how, how close is that to? So that's, um, well, it's two weeks and a bit before the jog, yeah. three weeks from cross country day, right. isn't it? That's interesting, um, okay. But a little bit different in the heights we're doing. <laughs> well, and it just depends what you're trying to achieve. Mine's quite game and the competition environment's quite exciting. So yeah. if he doesn't compete a lot, it's more exciting when he does yeah. compete. Yeah. So I'll probably actually do that and then I'll probably take him maybe even to do a bit of show jumping just sort of melee the week him. before. Yeah. So he's in a competition environment yeah. and, you know, tied to the lorry and, you know, not that that's what happens at badminton, but it's a just Just getting in the away head from it, yeah, home. not yeah. exciting. That's interesting. It is. They're all really, really different. Like yeah. fitness wise and preparation wise. I think the main thing that I've always been taught is that that last week before should be sort of a deceleration of the preparation, yeah. you know? Yeah where the horses do a lot more hacking and a lot more chilled out stuff. Interesting, and okay. when you arrive at the competition, you know, 
keep that sort of like keep it quiet keep it normal it's very easy to see somebody else do, even for me see somebody else doing things and copying and, them yeah yeah and it's yeah. important to have your own plan and make sure it suits you and your horse because that might be their plan for their horse well, and yeah might, exactly and they're all but different. I would say more often than not people get caught up in the moment and they whether it be buying a whole lot of new kit that isn't competition tested yeah, yeah. that then doesn't rubs that like boots that end up rubbing yeah, or yeah. you know and I think it's very easy to get caught up in that stuff and definitely try for a big and, event yeah. yeah try and keep it as normal as possible yeah no that's very and what level nice. are you going at, at Ascombe to Richwood? 100, 100 again yeah. yeah yeah so I went to Babington in 2019 on different pony and fell off on the cross country um, and yeah <laughs> sorry it's kind of made me realize how, like what a big test it was because I had yeah. no idea I hadn't been before but it's just so much bigger than your kind of run of the mill 90 so that's why I wanted to get her confident at some hundreds right because it's like yeah it's a lot more like a technical hundred yeah or even like with like novice technicality say but like hundred height yes so yeah I feel more prepared in the sense that I know what's coming up but then obviously I'm still like because yeah. it'll be her first time and everything. And has she stabled away from home before at a competition? Um, not at a competition, but I've taken her away to like camps and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's been alright, but no, she's never actually stabled away competing. Yeah, that's something to think about as well. Like often I try and bring my own bedding, even if bedding's provided, because if it's uh, just different. Keep it the same. Yeah, I try and keep everything as much the same as you can. Like the same thing if they drink out of a trug at home, then you yeah, have a trug bring there. That same or one. if they're used to hanging water buckets, then bring hang water buckets. You know, try and keep things as similar as possible, yeah. including like I always try and keep their feed time similar as well. So I try not to be in transit during their normal feed uh, time. Yeah, okay. I also try at the competition, let's say they have arena familiarization at 5.30 mm -hmm. and your horses were used to being fed at five o'clock. Yeah. Well, I'd rather feed it at 4.30 and go do my arena familiarization than do for arena familiarization at 5.30 really. and then they're waiting till 6.30 to eat. Yeah. So trying to keep those things the normal routines. routine yeah. for them as much as possible. The same as we always get quite excited. We're at a big event and people end up using the outside of the horse's boxes somewhere to hang out. Yeah. But if they're not used to that at home, they don't get the rest they need and the quiet yeah. time. You know, it's things like that. That's the thing. And it's, yeah, because I've obviously haven't competed away a lot. So it's really interesting getting your point of view, someone who does it all the time. Yeah. It, it's just like tried and tested a bit more, isn't it? Yeah, and I, I just like, think always when you're making a decision, say, is this normal for my yeah. horse? Is this going to upset their routine? Is this... Yeah, because yeah. they obviously don't understand what's going on and why they're suddenly away from home. Yeah. So. And a grey horse, you may not have access to hot water, so like yeah. a lot of cold baths is yeah. not going to get her in the right frame yeah. of mind, you know? So you want to be keep her rugged up enough she doesn't yeah. get stay yeah. in the state so that you can maybe spot bathe her. And, well, if it's warm, it doesn't matter, yeah. but if it's cold, yeah, just, yeah, you know, it's trying to... to think about, isn't it? Yeah, think Definitely. about those things that are how they might feel or think, you know, being yeah. away from home and like change of bedding, change of feed times, being washed with a cold yeah. hose, like it all can be quite disrupting yeah. to their, you know, what's normal to them. Yeah, yeah, 100%. All right, so do you want to warm up? What do you normally do for your warm up for cross country? A bit of trotting and cantering around? Yeah, or? well, I mean, <laughs> have to admit that I don't really have a lot of cross country lessons because I just, I don't, like when I'm not competing, I just completely like lose my balls going cross country. So I don't even like school a lot because I just get, I didn't yeah. like, it's when my blood's not up. I really like question myself so yeah. yeah I don't come in cross country school very often unless it's with like the babies I don't mind doing that um, but at a competition yeah well, obviously we'd have already done two phases but I'll just have like a little canter around get her moving forward jump yeah. a few things on an angle and then I'm like right just go and hopefully I'll be brave when I'm out there. So what we'll do, if you have a little walk and a trot and a canter around, uh -huh. and then I'll meet you at the water, okay. and we'll do a little bit of trotting and cantering in the water, just on a circle, and then we'll start jumping. Get me into it. And that okay. way, I think it's quite good for them to not just zoom, zoom in and out of the water jump, just to, yeah. you know, be in there for a minute, and yeah. um, and we'll do that, and then we'll, so I'll meet you over Definitely. the water jump after you've had a little trot Amazing. and canter around. Amazing. Alrighty, yeah. I'll see cool. you there. <laughs>
Actually, so I'm not jumping that. It's like aqua therapy. Yeah. Good girl. Good. Good. <laughs> that hard work. So I don't want to change too much because obviously the horse goes for you and you've been successful and everything. The only thing I would say, a little bit of a position thing, is that your balance often returns to the saddle, right? So as you go over the jump, right, you go to soften and give to the horse, but then as the horse makes the effort over the jump, your balance returns back to the saddle. Back too soon. Too soon, okay, yeah. Okay. So what I want you to think about is that your bal, even though it's good to sit, the balance should be in your leg, not in the saddle. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the reason being, if you think about it, if your balance is in the saddle and you're using your seat to keep the horse forward, if you get out of the saddle to jump, uh -huh. your balance is lost. So is the engine if you're creating it with your seat. Yeah. And what often happens then, the balance then returns back to the saddle or to the hand. What you want to be really conscious of is that the balance is in your lower leg and you're creating the engine from your leg. Okay. And that way, whether you're up or down, sitting or in a half seat, you're always supportive with your leg and you're supporting your own position. The horse doesn't have to compensate if you lose your balance. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you try and just both of them? There's a bit of a gravel path okay. each yeah. way. And think about that. You don't have to be in a half seat, but don't drive your lower leg forward. If you drive your lower leg forward, that will always return right. you back to the saddle. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. That's good. <laughs> oh, <don't jump. laughs> the first one was excellent. Yeah. When the horse went to add the stride, instinctively you did the right thing. You held your shoulder. But because you put your leg forward. Right, yeah. If you look, so if I were to take the horse out from under you at any time, you should land on your feet. Yeah. And when you got slightly defensive, you got here. Yeah. And if you're here, there's nothing to catch you except the saddle. It's fine to hold your shoulders, but think, think make sure shoulders, hips, and heels. Yeah. Don't go back with your body and forward with your leg. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So do that one more time. Okay. That's better. Good, so even though you got to a similar stride, you actually were much better in your position. It felt better. I didn't feel like I was kind of like thumping down so much. That's right. After. Yeah. So I did feel better. go up in your half seat. See, so my stirrups thing. are short enough. Well, I want you to be comfortable. That's the main thing. Can I touch your leg? Is that yeah, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I want you to think about, that's where your leg needs to be. If you do that. Yeah, it puts me it, back. Do you understand what I <laughs> you mean? You got me. <laughs> so what you want to do now, sit. There you go. But keep your leg there. When yeah. you sit, don't Thing do like that. that. Yeah. Keep your leg there. It is like a defensive thing, isn't yes. it? Yes. Like, oh, I'm not, I'm not and there. what ends up happening in that position, we end up driving with our seat. Yeah. Yeah. And we want to be use our seat to establish tempo, like move with the horse or ask the horse to wait. But it's really important to be have your leg on and have the horse in front of your leg. Yeah. Right? Not in front of your seat, but in front of your leg. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. Okay, so let's do a little bit more now. That's it.
That's better. Good girl. Big jump. Well done. so spooky on oh my word jam that's better Oh, very good. good. Very got good. Got me. Well done. <laughs> and actually, on the way back, you got up into your galloping position. Yeah. At the beginning, you were sitting the whole time, but. Um, yeah, she's riding really spooky today. Like, yeah, she's not, she, she looks, looks very spooky. Before. But I guess it's because I didn't do enough of this. So yeah, it's, it's very bargain. normal. The thing is, though, what's good about having this here is that, like, this morning was my horse's hack day because they had yesterday off. Yeah. So mine go for a trot around. So they're out here. Sometimes they jump, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just pop so a ditch a or through deal. the water. It just becomes yeah. very normal. Yeah. Okay, that was really, really good. So what we're going to do, we're going to do an, uh, another thing here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start over the post and rail. And you're going to go around. You see there's a big trichaner there. Yeah. Not that one, the small okay. one that's beside it. Uh, yeah. That it, was really mean. It, it practically covers the ditch, right? Okay. And after that, you'll come, you jump the oxer to this, this. here. All right. Okay? Yeah. Now, I want you to think about something else. Okay. Is that you're doing a very good job of keeping the horse balanced, which is really good because a lot of people, they use speed to make horses brave right. and aggression. And we don't want to do that. No. We want to present them balanced at the fence, which you're doing a really good job of and just keep that up. But just so that we make sure we're speaking the same sort of dialogue here is our language that really think about everything you do in reference to impulsion, Okay. right? So a lot of people say, come a little faster, come a little slower. But I really want to think, think about impulsion. Uh -huh. So how has impulsion been described to you before? Not necessarily speed, but almost like how much, I guess like, energy and activity you've got in the pace. Yeah, it's very good, yeah. I like to say that impulsion is where energy meets balance, Okay. right? So we want to have, if we just have energy, that's momentum, Yeah. right? Yeah. So if you're galloping across a field, going very quick, or even in the dressage, if you're doing a lengthen but it's unbalanced, yeah. you just have momentum. Right, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Balance, we can go very slow without much power, right? Like sometimes when you're just doing pole work in mm -hmm. the arena, it's a bit underpowered. Yeah. So every jump, every dressage movement, every type of profile requires impulsion but not necessarily with the same input of energy and balance. Yeah. So it might be different for a coffin fence or a steeplechase fence. Yeah. A chase fence. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or a roll top or a downhill combination. Just be thinking to yourself, I thought you, where you did a very good job there at that post and rail both ways. It's very vertical, yeah. so you don't want to be flat, but we know it's spooky, so the horse has to be in front of your leg. Yeah. So you came in, you made sure she yeah. was in front of your leg, <laughs> yeah. but also not flat. Yeah. Now, it's probably easier with, with, the, the, with a pony type yeah. because they are naturally quite balanced. Yeah, they don't get yeah. flat, do yeah. they? Um, so after all that rambling on, do you remember the course? That's it. Up in your galloping position.
because you naturally ride with your lower leg forward, yeah. it affects your galloping position. So you'll do four strides up and, and you'll almost sit a bit. I literally noticed that and I thought like, he's going to say that. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. So I just need to be a bit more like yes. lean on her neck and yeah. Yeah, exactly. I felt that. I think when I'm actually going cross country and I've got like a kind of straight gallop, Yes. I think I get more into it, but anytime there's like loopy bits on course. Exactly. That's why I ride so blooming slow across country. <laughs> I, mean? I do an exercise where I won't do it with you today, but if you take your feet out, yeah. I put mine here, but it does the same thing if you shorten your stirrup six holes. Okay. Right? Okay. And what that does is it reduces the foundation of your position, right? Uh -huh. That means all that will be touching the horse is this. And it works best just at trot, where you have to balance yourself. So like standing just, up in trot. Yeah. Right, okay. Just as a, and you learn to balance all this and not, you'll feel at first, you return, you'll fall back on their yeah. mouth. You'll need to hold a bit of mane. Yeah. But it's learning to control all from here up. And as you turn uphill, downhill, because really for jumping, now listen, all the worst habits exist at the highest level yeah. of the sport. So you, there are a lot of people that duck to one side yeah. and put their leg out and swing their leg back. And all, but that's not what we want to copy. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they may have a lot of talent, but they still, we all have bad habits. But what you want to think about is when we're jumping, this always stays the same. So we may go up a bank, we may jump a show jump, or we may drop into water. But in all those things, yeah. I'm here. Yeah. We don't drop into water here. Yeah. Like that's a bit old fashioned, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> because in the old days, you could drop into water here on the end of the buckle, but three strides later is not an arrowhead in the water, but now there is. Yeah. So you have to land in the water. You have to go here. I lengthen my reins a little bit, drop into water, and then land here and ride up to yeah. the skinny. Yeah. It's a lot less of yeah, that. Yeah, leaping, leaping off of things and then galloping yeah. away. Yeah. So no, always just sense. keep thinking about and that exercise of shortening your stirrups right up to jockey length uh -huh. really, really helps in learning to control all that. Yeah. Right? And I'll give that a go. the only other thing I'd say is when you ask the horse to wait, mm -hmm. you're a lot more dominant with your right hand. So if you watch the film, you'll see coming to this oxer here, or yeah. parallel, you'll see her head is turned to the right. Okay. It does Not happen quite frequently when you ask her to wait because you're a bit stronger with that right yeah. hand. So just be careful of that. Make sure you're using the reins as a pair. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense yeah. to you? Yeah, Good girl. Have a little walk, baby. Perfect. Well done, look. There you go. There you go. behind you didn't kick your feet forward okay and ideally you want to do two and two but yeah. at the same time you don't want to chase her yeah so if she wants to put the extra stride in we're not gonna try and come faster to avoid yeah. that right <laughs> and I thought you did a good job of managing that situation through there okay, okay. yeah yeah it's the drastic change in balance from a very long stride to a very short stride yeah or what you're tending to do, which you labeled as backwards, I wasn't gonna be that harsh, but coming into a fence in, in what I call the preparation zone, mm -hmm. so sort of like more than six strides out, you're on already on a very short stride. Mm -hmm. Then you see that you wanna add, so you make the stride even, even shorter. More. Yeah. And with that, it's very hard to keep the impulsion. Yeah. You're erroring on the side of balance, so with the, what we call impulsion, yeah. where I said the power balance equation, you're a bit heavy on the balance side. Okay. Yeah. And so I would force myself to say, I'm going to come in on a gallop. And when I'm sort of six to eight strides out, I'm going to stretch up and I'm going to make that a good canter, like mm -hmm. a medium length of stride. Or it was explained to me like doing a medium canter on a 20 meter circle in the dressage, that yeah. canter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and then whenever I see my stride, I can either leave it the same, shorten a bit or lengthen a bit. And those aren't drastic changes. Yeah. And therefore, it should be smooth if I'm a bit off, I'm a bit deeper, yeah. I'm a bit normal. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, definitely. That's, I like that So think about it. that. Think about that preparation zone. And when you're not in the preparation zone, sort of six, eight strides out, make sure you're actually galloping. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Does that make sense yeah. to you? Yeah, yeah. Very good. Leg, leg, leg. Come on. You can see why I choose to ride ponies. <laughs> I thought that was much better. Yeah, other than that one, I just didn't yeah, have her. But the ground tends to do that a bit. It yeah. does do that to them. It draws them deep there. It's fine. It's fine. That is enormous. <laughs> that jump. It jumps all right, actually. Oh it, my God. Surpri it's same as that bridge in the water. Yeah. That measures 90 centimeters. Yeah. Really, and that only measures about 95 at the top of the bank. It's the drop. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, the drop's pretty savage. Bank, really I felt so much better, yeah. Forward. It's almost like when they're bigger and I can't afford to be so backwards, it's yeah. like I, I actually get out of my really head and I'm well. like, you have to actually ride forward. It's no, up to I you. Think... If you want to leave it, I'm happy to leave it. If you want to do something more, tell me what you want to I do. I think, to be honest, as much as I'd love to jump more now, I've built confidence, I think. With it being so close to Badminton, yeah, I'm really happy. Yeah, and well, you also have Sunday, you're only competing Sunday. Yeah, so. yeah. Or Saturday or Sunday or that? Sunday, Sunday, yeah. Then. But no, yeah, like that was, when I trotted around at the start, I, I didn't even realise that was part of the combination, but I looked at that and thought, oh no, I won't jump that. So this is that very bit. much the direction eventing's going. Come downhill and throw them off balance. Yeah. Encourage the rider to come too fast to an arrowhead, yeah. which you didn't, you balanced up. Then, jump something big and that you have to attack and then do narrow. land straight and in control to the narrow. Yeah. That's what it's about. What they do is they try and send you this way and then make you do this and send yeah. you this way and make you do this. Yeah. So at Badminton they've got, um, it's weird, it's like a house but you can choose to jump this bit as a corner. So you yes. can either go straight but you can use that bit and then it's to a narrow, quite a wide yeah. sort of oxer. Like do you think I'm I think it's hard for you to say, but like, do you think that's an option that I should consider taking, or do you think I'm better going long? Do you know the thing is if... I mean, it's not... It, it doesn't come up as quickly as that, and I think yeah. as long as I can land from the corner, balance, and then send her forward again. You know all the stuff I said at the beginning about having a plan and all that? Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, very often, I walk a course, and I have both plans. Yeah. And... What you have to be sure to understand, she came out very spooky today. Yeah, yeah. And if she's like that, as you come around to that question, yeah. and she hasn't settled, you need to be prepared to take Go a safer long. way. But yeah. if she's come like today, and it's she settled and 
going better and being less spooky and rideable and you feel your eye is in, yeah. you can have a plan A and a plan B. Yeah, I think that's the thing is I obviously do 1900s where you don't, but like there's not really any direct routes and no. long routes. Oh. Like occasionally you might get it, but I'm not used to walking a course and having, having to choose, choose between what to do, yeah. And the most important thing I said to me actually, because I went to, um, I had a bad run at Bicton where my horse ran off with me in the five star and I rerouted and went to Poe. Mm -hmm. And um, a friend of mine, Tim Price, he said to me right before I went cross country, we had a little talk about the course and he said, don't make up your mind before you go out yeah. there what your horse is going to be like. I'm going to do this because my horse is going to be like that and my horse is going to do this. While you're out there, things may yeah. transpire. Yeah. And what an intelligent rider does, and I thought it was really good advice, is react to the evolving situation yeah. while you're out there. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, definitely. That's helpful. It's the same thing. Like, I remember the first four star I did, the. Um, I lived in America then, mm -hmm. and there's no spectators, and the courses aren't roped, really. Yeah. Um, and so when I arrived and walked the course, it all looked very doable. My horse had never had a cross-country jump penalty in his life, and I thought it was all very doable. But I found when I got out there, and it was roped tight, and you were heading at the water jump, and around it was a sea of people yeah. to the horse. There was no way out the other side of the water. It was a little gap yeah. that they had to go through after they finished the water jump. And he just got really backwards. And it shocked yeah. me. And I just wasn't prepared for it. So you have to really, as you know your horse, yeah. you know what they're like. But again, things can transpire when you're out there. And things can evolve while you're out there. It's the same thing when they walk into the dressage arena and there's spectators and flags. If they start to get upset, just walk and pet them on the neck. Yeah. Even if yeah. your plan was to canter around the arena, there's no point in uh, creating like, um, you know, uh, creating a fight with the horse yeah. over the spookiness of things. Just, yeah. you know? No, that's really good advice. And, and that's, I often tell my daughter is, I have these things like, I said to you, like impulsion is the power balance equation. It's just because I think it sticks with you, not yeah. because I'm trying to be clever. But I also say, um, not that this applies to you in general, but with horses, communication through relaxation, not domination. Yeah. So yeah. when they're unsure, especially in a new environment, like in an arena that has grandstands or whether that be show jumping or cross country, a cross country course with lots of spectators yeah, and tannoys and she's never seen. It's really important to get them on side. Yeah. And just reassure them and my wife had a really tricky thoroughbred off the track that she rode at five star and she used to have to go before the dressage he'd come in and get lit up in those big rings she'd walk put him on a long rein walk and pet him on the neck the, the judges were always confused whether yeah. she was ready or not she they'd blow the whistle and pick up and the reins and go but she gave him that minute to catch his breath you know yeah. and just remember that they're they need that. You, you're not there to ride them. You're there to pilot them yeah. and guide yeah. them, right? Yeah. Amazing. That was so helpful. Good. Thank you so much. So, just taken Jamie's studs out and washed down all of her legs. Just gonna wash her. Ooh. Oh, she's like, oh, that's freezing, Mum. Wash all over. But oh my word, I'm so buzzing after that. I'll admit, I was actually a bit. Maybe nervous isn't the right word. No, it is. I was a bit nervous. I think like, just because I don't have any cross country lessons, I, I get really worried about what people will say about my riding. And obviously someone as good as Mike, he's gonna pick up on things. Um, so yeah, I was a bit apprehensive about coming out and doing cross country in front of someone and having it like critiqued, but obviously it was completely well worth it. And Mike was just like the way he explained things was so good and he didn't make me feel like I was riding badly or anything like that like he was really complimentary he was just sort of building on what I've already got which I found a really sort of positive way to learn which was good and yeah he had loads of great tips it was very good to have my position kind of altered a bit doing a lot of youngsters and riding bare I've gotten really defensive and because I feel so secure in those saddles, I've just been like, right, my lower leg, like I can keep it there and it's fine. It's like really secure. But in reality, I've almost gone too far the other way and I've gone too defensive and I'm kind of riding a little bit 
I shouldn't be stood this side of the horse for that demonstration. You'll have heard Mike word it a lot better than me. Mike's lovely demonstrations. Yeah, you'll have seen those. They were a lot better than mine. Um, I know, he adjusted my lower leg, just putting it a little bit further back, which it felt a bit different at the start and a bit, yeah, it felt a bit odd at the start, but actually, like, that's how those saddles are designed for me to sit in. So I was suddenly like, oh my word, like this feels like, I, like where I should be. And it became less of like a conscious effort to sort of stay in that position near the end. I was kind of like, yeah, no, like that's where my lower leg feels good now. So that was good. <laughs> Jam says, have a little cheeky bum shot there, guys. <laughs> good girl. So yeah, obviously we didn't jump loads. We didn't do loads of massive things, but that was absolutely not the intention of the day. I wanted to come out. Sorry, I'll do more, more tum tum. You talk. No, no, it's all right. It's all right. I'll just, I'll be really gimpy if I just stand in front of the camera and talk. Um, yeah, I wanted to come out, build some confidence and just sort of go over my overall, like how I'm actually riding cross country. Mike picked up on really interesting things about my position that obviously meant that I wasn't, when I'm galloping, I'm not actually covering the ground, which probably explains why I've been so slow cross country. So he said I need to lengthen my reins a little bit more and rather I do a little bit of like a rising two point seat when I'm galloping. He was like, just if you've got your leg further back, then I'll be able to stay in that forward seat and actually cover the ground, let her neck go out and we'll get a bigger stride, which will speed things up without necessarily look like I'm going a lot faster, like I won't be going hell for leather, which is what I don't like doing. So I feel like this is almost a bit of a, a bit of a cheap kind of way of actually speeding my cross country up without going too fast. Keeping the same sort of rhythm, but lengthening. Yeah, exactly. I feel like I could just word vomit <laughs> so much now, but no, overall I'm just really, yeah, really, really happy of that lesson incredibly grateful to Mike Winter and of course Voltaire Design for organizing this entire day I'm very pleased with you Jam you're an absolute legend she geez did she get me out of trouble Nick I don't know if you're actually by that fence I think mum might have been I might have to insert the footage I literally put her underneath something and she was just like yeah that's right over we go she's such a legend anyway I'll finish washing her off and then say a final goodbye to you guys I'm going to tell you Another thing that I'm going to be doing in this third week before we go to Badminton. And then I'll sign off and I'll see you in the two week countdown. This is really embarrassing. You guys see my tap knocker like this. Don't look in, it's going to be organised for Badminton. But I did just want to show you, as I was mentioning the stud girth before. Nicholas, can you see that there? Should I come a bit closer? So you can see that very scratch there is exactly why I use my Voltaire Designs stud girth because Jam is very prone, like I said, kicking the belly and boom, that would have been her stomach, but nice sturdy leather means that she is completely protected. So just give this a little wipe off. It was really interesting to hear what Mike had to say about not changing your kit, going to a big event. like. I've done that so many times, like bought a new XYZ to go to a competition and you get there and you put it on for the first time, obviously you tread on it so it's not bad luck. And it just doesn't ride well, like whether it's tack or whether it's like competition gear that you're wearing. So it's really nice that I've come out. I mean, I've been riding in this tack, like I said, for the past year. It fits perfectly and I absolutely love riding in it. So now I just know that there is literally nothing I need to change tack wise before the big day. Hopefully then I'm not gonna have anything kind of crop up out of the blue as it were. So in terms of the rest of this week for Jammy, because I'm trying to do a kind of three week countdown for you guys before the big day. So there'll be three of these videos coming out. So as I said, tonight she's actually having her shoes done. They will be her badminton shoes and then Tomorrow, she is having the lovely Nikita come out to do the ETT treatment. So that's where you kind of like pulse and contract their muscles. She's having that and then she'll have that one more time before the big day. And then the rest of this week, I will be doing a schooling session. She won't gallop this week because it's now too close to her event on the weekend. But we've obviously come here and done a bit of fast work. Um, and yeah, we'll do a bit of hacking and then she's competing. In theory on Sunday, it's very much ground dependent. We have to, you know, really weigh up whether you want the experience from the weekend or whether it's actually best to just sort of, having had this lesson, whether it's best to not run her. But I will make a decision as to what the ground's like. Hopefully we get a little bit of rain 
get some April showers. Anyway, that is what week three is looking like for me ahead of going to the Voltaire Designs Badminton Grassroots Championships. Oh, saying it literally gives me like a little, a little flutter. I can't believe how close it is. Massive, massive thank you to my wonderful sponsor, Voltaire Design. Do head over to their website if you would like to potentially move over to using them. Their saddles are incredible. I honestly can't rave about them enough. The amount of research that's gone into them and they always, always, always put the horse first. Everything is done to try and make it as if you've kind of, like as easy as tack can be on a horse, if that makes sense. They're always thinking of whether their shoulders can still move, if they can come up and up through their back. Everything is thought about and it's also amazing to ride in. So do check out their website, it will be down below. And of course, the biggest thank you to Mike Winter for very kindly coming and teaching me today. I learned so, so much and will certainly be taking it forward to the big day. Also, thanks to Nick who stood there. Yay. Looking fantastic. And of course, thank you to Hobbit for driving us in the beautiful Empire Coach Builders lorry. <sighs> that being said, it's time to sign off. Next time I see you for this series, I'll only have two weeks to go. All right, I live, laugh, love you. Bye. <laughs>